inquiry-oriented learning uh, encompasses a number of important aspects of um, attributes, if you like, you want to develop in students. That, uh, it, it gives students the opportunity to design, it gives the students the opportunity to um, develop their own approaches in laboratories and in the field. It mimics very much more closely the sorts of activities that scientists actually involve themselves with than what is normally uh, experienced by students when they're at university. So it has a number of aspects to it, um, but basically it, it's a student-centered approach. It's the students deciding for themselves very largely what they're going to do and the approaches they're going to adopt. And that is in contrast to what is often experienced by students in a typical undergraduate um, course in science. There are many of the attributes that inquiry will um, develop in students, capabilities, approaches to learning, opportunities, I say, to be inventive, to be creative, will, and to be able to analyse data, be able to decide and approach themselves, to work in groups, all of these things come together in inquiry, will be lifelong learning skills, if you like, they'll leave with. And it's been, it's been so important that um, nationally, outcomes for students in science in, in Australian universities are very much focusing on the inquiry approach. So it's, if you like, nationally it's recognised these are um, the capacity to be able to, to, to um, plan, to be able to execute something yourself is something that we want to see all graduates be able to leave the university with, um, all universities in Australia. So it's becoming quite a, a hot topic nationally and will be for the next few years. You'd find within any institution perhaps an isolated person here and there who's embraced the idea of giving the students more control from first year through to um, honours year, but they haven't had the opportunity or the support or the direction or um, necessarily felt as though that they're working with others in that area. So, so a lot of, there are many academics in that area. Other academics will be quite happy with the way things are because you know, it, it, to run what you've run for the last 10 or 20 years is a lot easier than coming up with something brand new. So certainly some academics will need to be convinced about the value of moving to inquiry learning. Others are already convinced, but they're isolated to an extent. So the key thing for the fellowship is to change practice. It's not to come up with another interpretation or another definition because inquiry learning, people talk about inquiry oriented, inquiry based, problem based learning. You might say, well, where does one start and the other finish? For me, it's a, it's a question that you shouldn't even bother answering or even asking. There are lots of overlaps between these so-called different pedagogies, if I can use that word, and um, really they're trying to get much more active involvement of the students, and, and that's what it's about. So the fellowship is about moving people in that direction, helping them, and if you like, identifying people and giving them a little bit of, well, maybe it's encouragement, maybe it's hands-on, maybe it's going and run workshops to see that there are many different things at different levels you can do to push things in the direction where inquiry becomes a key facet or a key curriculum driver, a key curriculum focus, if you like. One of the um, issues that's bothering all universities is the loss of students at the end of the first year. And there's a number of reasons for that. Partly it's to do with large classes. And what you want to be able to do is to give students um, a small class experience. Inquiry-oriented learning will, gives you that opportunity to, to do that. Students work in small groups, but if you give them a very bland experience, which maybe recipe experiences do, then in fact what happens is they don't engage with the subject. They, they, they don't, the attitude is, isn't, isn't, um, doesn't become more positive, if you like. And this is particularly the case where students may be are in the first year and they're doing a subject like physics or chemistry and that's not what they're majoring in and you're not actually showing them how that subject links to their major. Through inquiry learning you can give them those the opportunities to do that. So there have been studies over many years of an academic nature to show that there's value in this. It's convincing people and showing that it can be done uh, without you um, throwing away everything you've got. It can be done in a, in a um, in a, in a staged way. People can move towards that without having to drop everything and start again. And so you've got to say, well, what is it that's happening in the first year, particularly, and in the second year, and uh, how can we get that engagement? And I said the current approaches are demonstrably not um, exciting students. They're not saying, this is relevant to me, 
and we're losing a good 30, 40, maybe it's even more at the end of the first year. So I think you need to be able to tackle it by having many people buy in at many different levels, including the students, because that's including the casual academics, including the technical staff. I think you need to say, well, how, who's liable to be affected by this initiative and how can we get them all on side? So I think the fellowship is about talking and working with all of these people. It's not picking a group that you think, with them we can actually make it all happen because that's not going to happen. You've got to have, even up to the vice chancellor, I'd say, or deputy vice chancellor, yes, we want our university to go in that direction. So it can happen if you engage the people, and the people are, the stakeholders, I say, are quite wide ranging.